All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we are going to talk about Errol Spence Jr., Gervonta Tank Davis, and Terrence Crawford, and some word that has been going around about the face of boxing. And Errol Spence Jr. puts out a tweet and says that he still has the game, still has a game on lock. Some really interesting ways that that has been received. Want to talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're going to be in the 147 pound division and the 135 pound division, just having a casual conversation about the the biggest fights in boxing, one of which has been made, and that is Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia, and another fight that keeps bubbling up in conversations, but yet, as of right now, has not been made, and that is Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Errol Spence Jr. put out a tweet, and I got notes about it. I saw the comments on it, and Man, it's really, really interesting to me, um, the perspective that people had on it, which was uh, he said that he put a tweet out and said, still have the game in a headlock. Um, and the question is, does he? Now, before I get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we release more videos. And also, if you're a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for continuing to do so. Thank you to everybody that supports and the super thanks. Um, so let's get into this. So there's been a lot of conversation about who the face of boxing is. And it has become more and more uh, commonly discussed because of what is going on with Canelo Alvarez, Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia, and Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. Uh, many people for, for the last several years, pretty much since uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. retired, had con continually referred to Canelo Alvarez as being the face of boxing, which I think is pretty much close to what Errol Spence Jr. said about having the game in a headlock. Now, I'm not saying that Errol Spence Jr. has ever said he was a face in boxing, has ever used that word, because I don't think he ever has. And on top of that, when he was asked who the number one pound for pound fighter is, his answer was Canelo Alvarez. But it wasn't necessarily based on skill set. It was saying because the man made two hundred million dollars in a year. Uh, yeah, if you're doing that, you are pound for pound a man. So clearly thinks that Canelo Alvarez is the big name in boxing because, hey, man, he's the one that's making the big money. Now, Canelo Alvarez, however, over the last few years has been decidedly less popular, at least his picks for his fights have. His pay-per-view numbers have gone down. He's going all the way now to him having pretty much back-to-back to back fights that people are not interested in. So people are now saying, well, who's the face of boxing? The face of boxing will be the winner of Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Gervonta Davis has uh, sold out arenas in five different cities or six different cities. He just had, according to Leonard Ellerby, just broke the top into the top 10 largest gates in the history of boxing, right? Now, some people are going to say, give Ryan credit for that. No, not giving Ryan credit for that because Ryan has never sold out an arena other than this fight. It doesn't work like that. Now, if he beats Gervonta Davis, that very well may become the case. But as of right now, that's the B-side into that fight. And we're talking about the ticket sold for that fight before we know what happens later. So is Gervonta. However, uh, Errol Spence Jr., prior to this fight, when anybody talked about the numbers of tickets sold, the pay-per-views done, all of those things, after Canelo Alvarez, it was Errol Spence Jr. And the question is now, is that does that continue to be the case? Because unlike, and in the, well, first, in the example that I used, where you have Canelo Alvarez and Gervonta Davis, right? Canelo Alvarez became the, the face of boxing because he had willing, big name, 
fighters who were willing to fight him. So you had Shane Mosey who was willing to fight him, Cotto who was willing to fight him. Um, Flo- obviously Floyd Mayweather Jr. that was favorite that was um, willing to fight him, and Gennady Golovkin that was willing to fight him. In order to get to that state to that status, Canelo Alvarez had to have other names on the card with him to allow him to get there. Now you have a situation where Canelo, where Canelo is not fighting the people, anybody else. It's just Canelo. And as a result, bloop, 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 it goes. So now you have Gervonta Davis, who by himself, similar to Canelo Alvarez, has shown that he can sell out arenas by himself. He doesn't need big name competition to do uh, a significant level of of sales. But now that he has another big name, somebody that other people know has a, has a distinct fan base is willing to is willing to fight him. Boom. Now look what he where he is. He's in what is being called the biggest fight in boxing. So what does that say about Errol Spence? It says as of right now, because the fight may get made. I know very much that Errol's got that on his plate, says that he wants that on his plate. There's still a chance that that takes place. How can you continue to have the game on lock when you don't have a partner that is going to be willing to fight you? It's very difficult to do. And if the goal was, and I don't know if that is the goal of Errol Spence Jr. or not to be the face of boxing, he has to find somebody that is actually willing to do that with him. So it seems as if to me, it is he's in a very unfortunate situation. And I said, seems like that to me because he absolutely has the fight that is there for him, for him to be that to be as big as any bigger, as big or bigger than anybody else in boxing, provided he can get past the fighter that everybody wants to see him fight, which is uh, Terrence Crawford. But until Terrence Crawford is willing to do that, that is going to limit him and prevent him from being able to do what Gervonta Davis is doing. Fortunately for Gervonta Davis, and I do think when all when we talk about all of this stuff, you know, uh, luck comes into play sometimes, right? Where uh, in this case of Gervonta Davis, Gervonta Davis has a kid who, you know, looks like, you know, your typical model type of guy has a big has a big uh, demographic that can support him. Not saying that the kids that are the 9 million kids that are on his Instagram, if those are all real Instagram buys, uh, you know, followers and not purchased. And I think a good number of them probably are. But if that is true, you know, Gervonta Davis is very fortunate because he had somebody that was in a situation. They say, hey, man, I'm trying to go for the gusto and is willing to get in there and do that. Right. Uh, Canelo Alvarez was also very fortunate. Then he had an older Floyd Mayweather Jr. that was willing to put him on his cards and was willing to give him a shot and say, "Okay, yeah, I'll give you a shot. You're you're you have that demographic similar to Ryan Garcia, a guy that had a certain look. Right. Similar to Oscar De La Hoya, a guy that had a certain look. Right. Floyd Mayweather gave him the chance and win or lose in that particular circumstance, which was a loss. Canelo Alvarez went up. Right. Canelo Alvarez went up. His name got bigger. Then he got Gennady Golovkin and he stuck with the Gennady Golovkin playbook for the rest of his career. So if it is and because of the responses that I've gotten, then no, man, Errol is really not up there with Germante anymore. He's not there with Canelo. He's not going to be Canelo. If it is that case, it's unfortunate that it's because he has a dance partner that will is not willing to let him on that stage. And honestly, he's pretty much been in that situation His whole career where he's had guys like Keith Thurman that was not willing to give him that fight, that unification fight early in his career. Right now, you got Terrence Crawford in that same generation of fighters that was was unwilling to allow him to get there. Also add to that the unluck of having large, large time, uh, large amounts of time where he's inactive. Right. Kind of prevents you from growing that fan base and growing that because you're inactive. So. My take on the matter is that, you know, clearly right now, Gervonta Davis is on a roll. Canelo Alvarez is on a decline. However, he's still way up there. Errol Smith Jr. is not. I don't think that he's gone down. I don't think that he's gone up. I think he's maintained right where he's been. But unless he can get Terrence Crawford in the ring or he decides that he's going to go past uh, 
Floyd Mayweather, I mean, uh, um, Terrence Crawford, and just get more active and knock people out on consistent basis and just, you know, just wear out guys that he's unwilling to fight. And by that, I mean guys that he's not willing to fight that are not necessarily, you know, top notch fighters, but ones he can put those signature, you know, absolutely uh, <laughs> epic whoopings on. It's going to kind of stay there. But anyway, just wanted to answer those questions for the people that asked me what I thought about that. Um, that's the best answer that I can give. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.